For 4.6 billion years, our Earth and the trillions of life forms that populated it proceeded for thousands of generations. Yet, all of a sudden, about 50,000 years ago, one particular species, our own, began to exponentially advance faster than any species had ever before. Seemingly in the blink of an eye, Homo sapiens created vast social networks, language, agriculture, and tools, culminating in the world that our species has built today. In our modern time, humans are in Earth's driver's seat, for better or for worse. But how did we get here? Why did our species survive when many of our closest cousins, such as the Neanderthals or the Denisovans, did not? To answer these questions, we take a deep dive into our own lineage. We'll find that our faces, our brains, and the chemistry that creates them have a key role to play in our species evolution. Compared to our competitors, our noggins really put us ahead of the curve. This is Changing Faces. Look at this creature. Now, this one. Here's one more. What is the first thing you notice about them? For many, it would be the face, the vessel with which animals connect and show emotion. Humans are no different. In fact, we are more reliant on our faces to convey our feelings. Because of this reliance, it would follow that they must be key to our evolution. What advantages do our expressive faces give us? To answer this question, we must first turn back the clock. In the past hundred years or so, archaeologists have attempted to construct our species lineage dating back millions of years. Though there are still many holes in our past to be filled, this incredible research has been able to paint a relatively dense family tree. Before the genus Homo, many of our ancient cousins roamed the Earth, from the older Ardipithecus and Australopithecus to our closer relatives, the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. But, as one can see, the present only includes us, Homo sapiens. Why? About 200,000 years ago, our species underwent a fascinating change in our fundamental structure. In their most recent book, Survival of the Friendliest, Brian Hare and Vanessa Woods posit that our species underwent a process called self-domestication. This theory alleges that a particular set of species were catered to evolve in a domesticated way, with reduced aggression and an inclination towards cooperation. For example, self-domestication theory proposes that dogs evolved from wolves, but only the friendliest subset of wolves, since these animals were more likely to scavenge near human encampments and befriend their inhabitants. Our own ancient ancestors returned the kindness of these friendly wolves, and those wolves, over many generations, evolved into the dogs we share our homes with today. Heron Woods argue that humans underwent a similar evolution by becoming friendlier. By cooperating with other Homo sapiens, our species was able to outlast our more combative counterparts. As an interesting side note, Heron Woods also theorized that our modern cousins, the bonobos, have also undergone a similar evolution, pointing to their reduced hostility towards others in their own species, especially compared with chimpanzees. Interestingly, this shift is most apparent in our face and brain. A recent study of over 1,000 skulls of Homo sapiens compared those of the middle Pleistocene era, about 200,000 to 90,000 years ago, to the late Pleistocene era, about 38,000 to 10,000 years ago. This research showed that our species skulls changed significantly over this time period. Compared with the skulls of the middle Pleistocene, the skulls of the late Pleistocene were much smaller, with the average male face length decreased by 10% and the brow ridge projection decreased by 40%. Furthermore, the same study found that skull sizes have been shrinking even more in the past 20,000 years as well. What changed? The answer lies in our brains, specifically our hormones. The hormone testosterone seems to be the central cause of both the changes in our facial structure and our demeanor. It has been shown that more access to testosterone during puberty increases both face length and brow ridge projection. As such, the lessening of testosterone would account for the findings that have shown our shrinking faces over the past 200,000 years. What emotion is testosterone most associated with? Aggression. The decrease in testosterone production within Homo sapiens further reinforces self-domestication theory, as the evidence points to our species shrinking skulls and cooperative behavior. But wait, there's more. Our brains have actually, and somewhat counterintuitively, also gotten smaller. And we're actually already smaller than our cohabitants hundreds of thousands of years ago. What could account for the shrinkage in our brain? The hormone serotonin is theorized to be the most likely brain shrinker in domesticated animals, as many studies have shown. What action is serotonin most associated with? Cooperative behavior. These two occurrences 
The decrease in testosterone and increase in serotonin are theorized to be the central components of the diminished size of both our skulls and the brains within them. But given that this reinforces the self-domestication hypothesis, our species is probably better off for it. There are a couple more fascinating aspects to our faces that merit discussion. An attribute that is often overlooked is our eyebrows. The concept of eyebrows is confusing to say the least. Why do humans produce these strange tufts of hair slightly above our eyes? And why do faces look so strange without them? Recent research has shown that our movable eyebrows can be used to express a wide range of subtle emotions, which could have played a crucial role in human survival. These changes, according to researchers, only emerged when Homo sapiens began to interact in social groups. Interestingly, the researchers also tie in eyebrows to the evolution of dogs and self-domestication theory. Quote, but these changes weren't just exclusive to humans. The developments seen when wolves became domesticated are in some ways similar. Dogs have more waggy tails and flatter faces than wolves, and dogs who are better able to look cuter by raising their brows are more likely to be selected from shelters. It seems then that for humans and dogs, being able to get along with others was key to survival. And for our ancestors, the evolution of the eyebrows performed an important function in expressing friendliness, all of which forms part of a process of self-domestication, where our humans' brains, bodies, and even anatomy reflects a drive to get on better with those around us. If this self-domestication theory is correct, the reason that our species survived while the Neanderthals and Denisovans did not is rooted in our capacity for kindness to those of our own species. How, then, can we explain the stark tribalism which has plagued our species for as long as history has been recorded? Heron Woods write, quote, Group members had the ability to connect with one another, and the bonds among them were so strong they felt like family. With this new concern for others came a willingness to violently defend unrelated group members or even intergroup strangers. Humans became more violent when those we evolved to love more intensely were threatened. What, then, has bound us together as tribalism attempts to break us apart? At its most basic, it is our shared humanity. One example of this is the whites of our eyes, our sclerae. Humans are the only living primate with this attribute. Other apes produce pigment that darkens their sclerae to blend in with their irises to hide their eyes. We, on the other hand, promote them. It is theorized that we evolved to depend on eye contact as the central way to connect with other members of our species. No place is this more apparent than the loving gaze between a parent and their child, which releases in both parties the hormone oxytocin, which Heron Woods call the mama bear hormone, as it accounts for both the love between these people, but also the rage a mother feels when someone threatens her baby. Furthermore, as Heron Woods point out, the quickest way to dehumanize someone is via this very attribute, changing the color of someone's sclera. Even a slight change to the color of someone's eye is enough to make us feel uncomfortable. In the animal kingdom, it is highly unusual to have a trait with no variability, but the whites of our eyes are just that. Perhaps we could learn something about our fellow homo sapiens if we simply look into each other's eyes and attempt to connect. It is something we should strive to accomplish as we continue to evolve, reinforced by the findings of self-domestication theory that our basic human kindness is why we survive to this day. It is, however, easier said than done. After all, we're only human.